All right, we're a little late to the party, but welcome in to our first emergency podcast of the offseason. Frank Stanfield joined by a festive Scott White. Has his Christmas tree up in the background. Love to see it. Saturday, November 27th, we are here to talk about the Mets and thankfully not Steve Cohen's tweets. All right. Hope everyone had a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, let's get right into it. The Mets signed a trio of players, starting with one of the bigger names on the market. Starling Marte, four years, $78 million, which actually seems like a pretty reasonable contract. Just had a ridiculous season with the Marlins and the Oakland A's. 310 batting average, 12 homers, 89 runs, 47 steals in just 120 games. He finished as the 22nd overall player in 5 by 5 Roto. Was really good in points leagues this past year, too. He's got 3.8 fantasy points per game. Sixth among outfielders. That was better than Kyle Tucker, Mookie Betts, Jordan Alvarez. He just turned 33 years old. Usually good for at least one IL stint per season. What do you think about the move? Starling Marte to the Mets. Well, I mean, let's start with the Mets, I guess. Um, and you mentioned that four years, 78 million, less than 20 million per for a guy coming off a career season, the best center fielder on the market this off season. I mean, I was, I was surprised how little he got too. I don't, I guess the fourth year, um, maybe he accepted an, a lesser average annual value to get that fourth year. Um, and the reason why that would have been hard for him to get is because he's 33. And so, you know, obviously the best thing Starling Marte brings to the table is speed. He was the major league leader with 47 steals last year. He was one of only two guys with 35 or more, with Merrifield being the other. Um, and you mentioned he did it in only 120 games, so that steals pace, you know, over 160 games, if you were to play that, which he never has before, uh, you know, it'd be something like 60-plus steals for Starling Marte. So you can understand why... Um, just based on what he does in that one category and how scarce that category is, you could see why he would get drafted, you know, early round three in a traditional five by five league. So at some point in round three, probably, but because he is 33 and because his skill set depends so much on that, on, on speed, basically, I mean, that that's, that's something that when that falls off, it could happen very quickly. So I'm not predicting it's going to happen this year, but you have to acknowledge it's a possibility. Am I going to be the guy who drafts Starling Marte in round three, early or late? Probably not because I, I think you're passing up a lot of power to get that stolen base advantage and, and power impacts all the other categories. He's been a 20 homer guy twice before, you know, last year, that season was split between two ginormous pitchers parks. So maybe, maybe the move to city field, he can get back to that 20 homer threshold, but certainly you shouldn't bet on that. I, I don't see that his stock really changes that much. It is a, it is a park improvement. So maybe it'll help him a little, but I, I just, I don't think you can count on it. I do think the decline in power could be real as well. I mean, you spoke a little bit about it, only 12 homers over 120 games, but the ground ball rate, uh, it's always been pretty high for Starling Marte. That was uh, definitely the case last year as well. Career high, 54.8% ground ball rate for Starling Marte. Home run to fly ball ratio right in line with his career. So uh, just a modest pro uh, projection here in late November. But I would expect 280 plus. That could be on the lower side. 15 to 18 home runs for Starling Marte. Uh, probably expect, you know, 30 to 35 steals, though. Again, like he just showed us what the upside was this past season. His early NFBC ADP is 27.8. We actually have 20 NFBC drafts already in the books. So uh, people are a draft in Scotty. He's mm -hmm. going just after Cedric Mullins. Who would you rather have between those two? Uh, if you were drafting today, which I assume you're not going to do. Well, obviously Starling Marte has more of a track record, but I would rather go with Mullins. I mean, he was the only 30, 30 guy in the majors last year. I think the, the most suspicious of his stats was the batting average, and we saw that decline in the second half. He was more like a 260 hitter in the second half, and yet the power and speed numbers were, they held completely from first half to second half. So I, I'm pretty confident in Cedric Mullins, and uh, I'd be much more likely to invest a third-round pick in him than in Marte. 
All right, and there are some rumors floating around that the Orioles are shopping Cedric Mullins, so we'll see if he remains with that team uh, by the time you know spring training rolls around. The Mets also signed Mark Hanna and Eduardo Escobar to two-year deals. Obviously, these aren't uh, as exciting deals as getting Stalling Marte, but pretty yeah. solid players in their own right. Mark Hanna was having a great season, Scott, uh, and then suffered a hip injury in June, which basically derailed his entire season. 826 OPS before the injury, a 659 OPS after that injury, uh, Eduardo Escobar had a nice bounce back season, 253 batting average, 28 homers, 90 RBI. We'll have second base and third base eligibility for fantasy in 2022. So what do you think about Mark Hanna and Eduardo Escobar? Do you think that they both play every day for the New York Mets? Yeah, I, I do. Uh, obviously, the Mets, well, they, they then went around and signed Starling Marte, of course, but they had a couple outfield openings. Michael Conforto is a free agent, so... Presumably with this signings, that means he's not going to be back with the Mets. Uh, I, it wasn't clear to me when I first started doing my player rankings that either Canna or Escobar would land in a spot where they would play every day. Uh, but, you know, the Mets have been a, a mess at third base for a couple seasons now. Escobar hopefully brings some stability there. They're both, they're both pretty limited in what they bring to the table for fantasy. Um, Canna was awesome in 2019 he was terrible in 2020 the short season he was awesome in the first half of 2021 he was terrible in the second half was it because of the hip injury it's possible but he's also a soon to be 33 year old with a pretty sketchy track record the one thing we can say for sure for canna is that he, he knows how to get on base so i suspect even in those three outfielder points leagues he'll probably merit a late round pick but um you know, is he going to provide enough power to be somebody you want in your lineup all season long? You know, it doesn't impact the ball especially hard. It is, again, he's going from a horrible park for hitters to a pretty neutral park, so that helps. But I, I, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure that, I'm not sure what to expect from Ken. I just, I, I know he's not worth a big investment. Um, Escobar, you know, pretty much power and nothing else. So, uh, you know, he, he's not, he, he's more like a fallback option at third base, but Hey, a lot of people are going to have to rely on fallback options at third base. I think maybe now that there's more assurances about his role heading into 2022, uh, you know, he might creep into the top 15 or so might go in that same range as questionable. Matt Chapman, Yon Moncada types who have more upside, of course, but showed a lot more downside last year, too. Yep. Eduardo Escobar, 199.1 is the ADP through those first 20 drafts. Mark Hanna, 262.5. So, you know, if in your typical 12-team leagues, those are going to be uh, more just late-round picks than anything yep. else. Eduardo Escobar, you know, if you're playing 5x5 five five Roto, you know, maybe he winds up being your corner infielder or something like that. Uh, Scott, what does this do for the rest of the Mets? You know, J.D. Davis, Jeff McNeil, Dom Smith. It seems like those are probably some names on the outside looking in as of now. Remember, Robinson Cano will be back uh, with the Mets this upcoming season, and uh, we're assuming the National League will have the DH. We don't know that for sure yet. Uh, I, I think this could also just mean good things for Francisco Lindor and Pete Alonso. So what do you think about the other pieces on the Mets? Yeah, it's it's interesting. Obviously, this is a major shakeup for their lineup. But, okay, you got Canna taking over Dominic Smith's spot. You've got Eduardo Escobar taking over J.D. Davis's spot. Two years ago, which of those would we have said was better? Provide, had, had the higher offensive ceiling. We probably would have gone with Dominic Smith and, and J.D. Davis. So this is this is... You know, as exciting as it is for Mets fans for them to make this this big free agent splash on Black Friday of all days, um, it's kind of a concession that their higher upside bats. You know, they're they're kind of they're kind of throwing in the towel on them, kind of moving on from Dominic Smith and JD Davis. I don't know if that means they'll be literally moved in a trade where they'll have a shot with another organization, or if they're just um, kind of waste away on the bench for them. I don't really know. But I, I do think Canna and Escobar are going to get the lion's share of the bats there, even if uh, even if Smith and Davis do stick around. And um, yeah, uh, presumably Cano's going to have a job. He's very old and <laughs> missed a whole season, so I, I do think there's some question there. But obviously, Jeff McNeil is versatile. They can play him 
at second or third or in the outfield. So, um, yeah, I think they're going to be, I think, uh, it, it's certainly a more stable lineup, even if it's doesn't have quite as much excitement as we, um, as fantasy owners thought it did heading into last year. Yeah, I mean, look, I don't even know if Robinson Cano is an everyday player at this point. Certainly not at second base. I assume if there's a DH, he's probably going to work his way into that rotation uh, pretty often. But yeah, Jeff McNeil could play second or they can move Escobar to second, play Jeff McNeil at third. However they want to do it, there's still a chance that they sign Javier Baez or another shortstop uh, because there's a lot of rumors floating around right now that the Mets are still looking to spend more. So whether it's a shortstop, whether it's you know Kevin Gosman, who apparently they're rumored to be in on, uh, we'll see what happens with the rest of those moves. There was another smaller move, Scott, that we'll quickly touch on here. Uh, Adam Frazier traded to the Seattle Mariners for left-handed reliever Ray Kerr and outfielder Corey Rozier. And it was a solid season for Adam Frazier. 305 batting average, five homers, 10 steals, 83 runs scored, makes a ton of contact, doesn't really do much else. Like It's kind of empty batting average. Uh, seems like he's just going to slot, slot in as the starting second baseman for the Seattle Mariners. Yep. Yeah, but I imagine that would mean Abraham Toro moved to third base. Kyle Seeger is a free agent, so he's probably gone. You know, but but yeah, Toro could come off the bench too if the Mariners decided they wanted to go with a higher profile player at the hot corner. But yeah, also it's worth pointing out. You know, once they got Adam Frazier, the Padres last year, there there became this playing time crunch in the infield that presumably is relieved now. I imagine Eric Hosmer will go back to everyday duty for whatever that's worth. Uh, yeah, we'll see if the Padres make any other moves right now. It seems like Cronenworth will slot back in at second base. Uh, I assume Tatis will play shortstop. He won't be in the outfield anymore. So um, those things are yeah. working their, their, working themselves out uh, as of now. All right, Scott, that'll do it. Our first emergency uh, podcast of the offseason. I'm sure there's probably going to be uh, a ton more. We'll see if that happens before... December 2nd when the uh, the CBA expires here and all of free agency and all of baseball goes into a lockout. Unfortunately for Scott, I am Frank. Thank you all for listening and watching fantasy baseball today. We'll be back again on Tuesday. Bye-bye.